Now, there's been a good deal of conjecture about the cause of President Obama's failures. As he uh, frequently reminds us, he, he assumed the presidency at a difficult time. That's the reason, by the way, that we argued during the campaign that these were not times for on-the-job training. Had, had, uh, had he or his advisors even spent a few years in the real economy, they would have learned that the number one cause of failure of small and large businesses in the private sector is lack of focus. And that the first rule of turning around any troubled enterprise is focus, focus, focus. And so when he assumed the presidency, his energy should have been focused on fixing the economy, creating jobs, succeeding in our fight against radical violent jihad on Afghanistan and Iraq, and keeping us safe. I instead, he applied his time and his political capital to his ill-conceived takeover of health care and to building his personal pop popularity in foreign countries. He, he failed to focus, and so he failed. But there was an even bigger problem than just his lack of focus. Ronald Reagan used to say something about like this, about liberals. It's not that they're ignorant, it's just that what they know is wrong. <laughs> and, and too often when it came to President Obama's agenda, what he knew was wrong. Now, he did correctly the other day some, say something that, that, that rung true. He, he acknowledged that government doesn't create jobs, that only the private sector can do that in a lasting way. He said, however, that government, correctly, government can create the conditions, the environment, which leads the private sector to add employment. But then consider not just what he said, but what he did in the last year. And ask yourself, did it help or hurt the environment for investment and growth and job creation? Announcing a 2011 tax increase for individuals and businesses and capital gains, hurt. Passing cap and trade, hurt. Giving trial lawyers a free pass, hurt. Proposing card check to eliminate secret ballots in union elections, hurt. Holding on to GM stock and insisting on calling the shots there, hurt. Making a grab for health care, almost one-fifth of our economy, hurt. Budgeting government deficits in the trillions, hurt. And scapegoating and demonizing business people, hurt. President Obama instituted the most anti-growth, anti-investment, anti-jobs measures we've seen in our lifetimes. Now, he called his agenda ambitious. I call it reckless. He... He scared employers, so jobs were scarce. His nearly trillion dollar stimulus created not one net new job in the private sector, but it saved and grew jobs in the government sector, the one place where he should have shed jobs. And even today, because he's been unwilling or unable to define the road ahead, uncertainty and lack of predictability permeate the private economy and prolongs its stall. America is not better off than it was $1.8 trillion ago. Now, will the economy and unemployment recover? Of course. Thanks to the vibrant and innovative citizenry of America, they always do. But this president will not deserve credit that he will undoubtedly claim. He has prolonged the recession, expanded the pain of unemployment, and added to the burden of debt, we're going to be leaving our future generations because of it. President Obama, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, and their team have failed the American people. And that's why their majority will soon be out the door. Isn't it, isn't it fitting? Isn't it fitting that so many of those who have contempt for the private sector will soon find themselves back in it. <laughs> the, people of, the people of America are looking to conservatives for leadership, and we can't fail them. Conservatism has had from its inception vigorously positive, intellectually rigorous agenda and thinking. That agenda should have, in my view, three pillars. Strengthen the economy, strengthen our security, strengthen our families. We will strengthen our economy 
by, simply, by simplifying and lowering taxes, by, by replacing outmoded regulation with modern, up-to-date, dynamic regulation, by opening markets to American goods, by, by strengthening our currency and, and our capital markets, and by investing in basic science and research. Instead of leading the world in how much we borrow, it's time that we make sure we lead the world in how much we build and create and invest. We will strengthen our security by building missile defense, restoring our military might, and standing by and strengthening our intelligence officers. Conservatives, conservatives believe in providing constitutional rights to our citizens, not to enemy combatants like Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Yeah, on our watch, the conversation with a would-be suicide bomber will not begin with the words, you have the right to remain silent. Our, our conservative agenda strengthens our families in part by, by putting our schools on track to be the best in the world again. Because great schools start with great teachers, we'll insist on hiring teachers from the top third of college graduates, and we'll give better teachers better pay. School accountability, school choice, cyber schools will be priorities. And we'll put parents and teachers back in charge of education, not the fat cat CEOs of the teachers unions. Strong families have excellent health care. Getting health care coverage for the uninsured should be accomplished at the state level, not a one-size-fits-all Pelosi plan. And, and, and the right way to rein in health care cost, and this is, the, this is the toughest issue, but the right way to rein in health care cost is not my, by applying more government and more controls and making it more like the post office. It's by making it more like a consumer-driven market. The answer for health care is market incentives not health care by a Godzilla-sized government bureaucracy. Now, when it comes to our, our role in the world, our conservative agenda hews to the principles that have defined our nation's foreign policy for well over six decades. We will promote and defend the American ideals of political freedom, a free enterprise, and human rights. We will stand with our allies and confront those who threaten peace and destroy liberty. That's what America is. Of course, there's, uh, there's much more in our positive, intellectually rigorous, conservative agenda. Not all of it's popular. But the American people have shown that they're ready for troop, excuse me, for truth to trump hope. The truth is that government is not the solution to all our problems. The, uh, a little plug here. This year I've taken some time out to, to write a book about the truth of the challenges that the nation faces and about the solutions I believe we need to overcome them. I've titled it, No Apology, The Case for American Greatness. I'm told that my friends have set up a booth outside you can, so you can each buy a couple hundred copies, uh, maybe one or two. You know, um, most seriously, sometimes I, uh, I wonder whether Washington's liberal politicians truly understand the greatness that is America. Let me explain why I say that. I, I was, uh, I, at Christmas time, I was shopping at, at Walmart to buy some toys for my grandkids. And as I Waited in the checkout line, I, I happened to just look around the store, those big signs, you know, with the yellow face, the big smile on it, and the low prices. And I thought to myself of the impact of Sam Walton on that company. I didn't know him, but I read stories about him. He, he apparently was all about good value to the consumer and making sure they could buy anything in his store they might want. And you know what? So it's